sometimes the issue in the hamstring isn't really with the hamstring. The issue is that there's a lot of stuff that's gunked up in the hip that's keeping the hamstring from functioning properly. So what we do with the foam roller is we're working to break up all of this junk that's in the hip here. So when he's rolling here, he wants to find these spots that are really tender and he wants to just hang out on them. Um, he can stay on the glute, he can roll a little bit more to the side. So then when he goes to the side of the hip here, he has to shift his body position, right? So that it's a little bit longer, elongated. He can roll a little bit cleaner over that side of the hip and the hamstring there. And he's really allowing all of this to kind of open up and loosen up, okay? And then he can also roll a little bit further onto the hip flexor. Um, this area gets really, really tight and grabby with all the running that you guys are doing. And so, Getting this front of the hip to release is really important so that the glute can work and the hamstring can relax a little bit. So another way we can do this if we want to get more specific with it is we can actually introduce the lacrosse ball. And he can use this instead of a roller. So what this really allows us to do is he can get into those places, those trigger points that are really painful and he can actually once he's there, he's just going to sit on it and he's just going to hang out and then he's going to allow his leg to open up, he's going to extend it, he's going to move it around and he's basically uh, working through all of this junk and breaking up all that scar tissue and it's really effective for just getting a lot of release in the glutes which again, the more you can actually actively use your glutes, the less this has to do. So this guy gets stronger and more innervated and this guy releases. One of the reasons why people have chronically tight hamstrings is because their postural position has a pretty big anterior pelvic tilt. So if Michael demonstrates here, his pelvis is tilted backwards so that this is very short and bunched up and these muscles are really elongated. So basically, they're under constant strain, okay? This is very short and tight, and this is constantly strained. You can't use your glutes very effectively from this position. So what we want to encourage is this pelvis being more neutral. So someone who has a postural problem where they're in this anterior tilt, the, the exercise that we do to fix that is called the cook hip lift. So we're gonna come down to the mat, And we're gonna bring one knee into the chest. Now, one thing that you can do if you're at home by yourself is you can put a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball in here to make sure that you keep your knee towards your chest, okay? So then from here, guys, you're gonna keep this foot flat on the floor. You're gonna push through your heel and drive your hip upward towards the ceiling. So he's just gonna push all the way up and then he's gonna come back down, okay? So you'll find this is more difficult than you think it's going to be, okay? So he pushes up to the heel, he's enervating the glutes. What this knee into the chest is doing is it's keeping the pelvis from rotating around and rocking around. So the only thing that can fire in this position is his glute, okay? That's why this is cool. So you wanna do six to eight on each side and we wanna work for symmetry. We always wanna try to be symmetrical in terms of our glute strength. 